Uh, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on superconductors for power transmission beyond the age of copper. Uh, my name is Leila Sawyer, I'm the Secretary General of Current and I'll be moderating today's webinar. So now for our first speaker today, we have Dr. Owen Hodge, Chief Engineer at Supernode. Thanks Leila. The reality is that, that current grid technology simply cannot deliver um, decarbonization uh, in this way. So copper is limited in terms of its efficiency. It's limited in terms of its cost and it's limited in terms of its capacity. So we simply don't have a sufficient transmission capacity within Europe to deliver on a decarbonized system. And we need to innovate and we need to invest in innovation and in transformative technologies, such as those of, of superconducting cable systems to deliver on decarbonization in Europe. Um, the new paradigm is that we need to move vast amounts of energy from, from both the north and the south into the centre of Europe. And to do that, we need a new type of transmission grid. Next slide, please. So we advocate for, for a super grid, essentially, or, or a meshed pan-European grid to deliver on um, a system that's based on renewable sources. So we understand that the solar and the wind are are, can be intermittent and they're inversely correlated. So in the summer season, we've got really good solar resource in the south and in the winter season, we've really good wind resource in the north. And we need a grid that can uh, transmit that power from those uh, sources to the population centers. So what are superconductors? So uh, most of you will know superconductors are materials that offer zero electrical losses when certain criticalities are met, are met um, primarily that they're, they're kept cool. Um, so superconductors are more efficient than conventional copper cables as a result um, uh, because they, they suffer no losses, they have no dual heating, they can be operated at much higher power densities than copper cables. Um, as a result of that, they can be operated at much lower voltages, so we increase the current density and we reduce the voltage levels. And essentially, we can operate at transmission levels of power capacity at distribution voltage levels. So this is really, really advantageous. Um, voltage in electrical equipment drives size and that drives cost. So if we have a system that's based around um, a lower voltage cable technology, we can realize significant system cost savings um, and that could be achieved through superconductivity. Um, I guess to compare directly to copper, and there, it depends on application and design, etc. But we like to propose that there's, there's a ratio in terms of current density of 1 to 200. So um, in terms of cross-section, one of the tapes that you see on the screen um, uh, per, per millimeter square can be 200 times smaller than that of copper. So that is, is obviously very advantageous in terms of, of the, the size of the cables and, and um, the leeway and consenting and all that type of um, challenge that exists when high copper uh, high capacity copper uh, needs to be integrated in the system. We move on to our next speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Matthias uh, Noe, a professor for energy applications of high temperature superconductivity at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. Yes, uh, before we continue with the cables, I want to shortly introduce the opportunities for superconducting fault current limiters. These are the main features of a fast short circuit limitation within the first current rise, we have no impedance and normal operation. We have a fast and automatic recovery if the circuit breaker opens for some time. It is fail safe, which means that even if the superconductor fails here in the middle, uh, you limit the current anyway, yeah, and you protect your equipment. And it is applicable, as you see in a minute, at high voltages and in uh, some cases already cost effective. Yeah. So I would now like to introduce uh, Mike Ross, Managing Director of American Superconductors, AMSC. So uh, we're uh, our project in Chicago is an application of superconductor cables uh, that we at AMSC refer to as the Resilient Electric Grid or REG Networks, which is a way of using uh, superconductor cables, uh, one application of superconductor cables that really focuses on increasing reliability while dealing with the other challenges and the other realities of doing uh, major infrastructure projects in dense urban areas. 
so this technology allows us to, to do things uh, that you just simply can't do with copper or aluminum cables and, and to try to uh, avoid the challenges in ur urban areas like increasing the size of substations and, and right of ways uh, and avoiding um, using uh, oil filled cables and gas filled cables and so on. So specifically the project in Chicago, um, the goal is to uh, interconnect uh, a number of substations in the downtown Chicago area to increase the, uh, the reliability and resiliency of those cables, uh, of those substations. And what makes it important for the specific project is that uh, in, in, these, in downtown Chicago, there are two substations that are fed uh, radially. Uh, so they're fed from one source at uh, 69 kV. And, uh, and then a, set, a third substation that's uh, connected uh, by multiple sources at 138 kV. And the goal is to interconnect all three of these substations together so that if you have a problem with the transmission to any one substation, uh, we can move power through the superconductor cables and keep the lights on uh, during those events. Now I would like to introduce uh, Doug Willem, uh, principal uh, R&D engineer at NKT who will tell us about his uh, project, uh, the Superlink project. Uh, we are focusing on two kinds of products. So the first one that I mentioned on the opening slide is the HDS Triax Energy and Fulcan Limiting Cables. Um, and they have been developed um, primarily with partners in the USA. Uh, and they're suitable for the 10 to 72 kilovolt uh, operation area and we have demonstrated uh, 3000 and 4000 amp versions of this technology and we think it's suitable for uh, between 1000 and 5000 amps so that brings powers of 25 to 500 megawatt so it's truly uh, transmission level power at distribution level service so this so the task at hand here is a very concrete case where uh, the end customer sees a big benefit of connecting an existing substation at, uh, at the south of Munich to the high voltage overhead line at the north uh, of the study uh, of, the, uh, of Munich. Uh, several detailed studies have been done uh, of the various alternatives. And uh, the outcome of these studies have shown that uh, HTS could for real be a very good alternative. It's a limited distance, so only about 12 kilometer. It goes through a landscape of very densely populated uh, city area. Uh, so we're looking at 500 megawatts at operation voltage of 110. So one single HTS cable then replaces five conventional uh, cables, which would require five separate routes. Um, now we move to uh, Norela Konstantinescu from uh, uh, NCOE, Head of Section Innovation. Uh, regarding the future, so uh, we um, actually identified the superconductivity as uh, one of the potential uh, game changer in uh, work we do in NCOE uh, regarding uh, uh, vision towards uh, the low uh, carbon uh, uh, energy system. And uh, what we can say is that uh, superconductivity probably, uh, it has a huge potential for development. Uh, from our perspective, uh, there are these uh, urban uh, applications, which uh, are, uh, as we saw in the examples today, are relevant. Potential developments can be related uh, to uh, uh, offshore, uh, especially in uh, combination with the um, HVDC and what we called uh, the supergrid uh, uh, offshore. Finally, last uh, but not least, I would like to introduce uh, Mario Dionisio, um, policy officer at DG Enner uh, in the unit dealing with innovation, research, digitalization, and competitiveness. It is clear that the business as usual uh, to, to grid planning is not enough. We need something a bit more elaborated. So to go towards a, a modern uh, energy system. And what we're discussing here also today is the fact that what big amount of 
um, yeah, so power currently needs to pass through uh, identified corridors. Um, so we need some uh, new technology replacing or which can bring um, transport better electricity and uh, conveniently and um, in, a, in a modern technological uh, acceptable way. So this is uh, related to, clearly to superconductors. EU policy instruments are, are, are put in place. Um, so should just to enable the decarbonization and the energy uh, system of the energy system and our economy. Um, so it is clear that uh, with the Horizon Europe, uh, other EU funding instruments, we support this transformation and we support also uh, demonstration projects which are needed uh, for uh, to 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 get to arrive to this, uh, this innovation uh, to these findings and go on with the energy transition. More um, R and I is needed clearly to, uh, to to obtain solutions applicable which, because we're talking about energy system and clearly we need to be sure that the technologies are, are working and to do this we need um, yes more uh, demos. Uh, I would like to invite all our panelists to turn their camera on. Um, we have already had some questions uh, in in the chat. So maybe from the technology companies, uh, what would you, what do you see as where policymakers could do more to support this uh, the development of this technology, or what do you see is uh, what policy could uh, help with? So who? Um, um, Someone would like to comment on yeah, I, I that? Yes, thank you, okay. Owen. Um, so I guess what we'd like to see in Supernode is, is a mindset change really from um, the perspective that uh, renewables connection needs to be based around high voltage systems. It, it doesn't, it needs to be based around high power capacity systems. Um, and, and in changing that mindset, um, the whole energy system can leverage the benefits that can be accrued from superconductors, which can operate at lower voltages. So maybe the question then to our other panelists, what could be done uh, to, to, speed, to speed up? Uh, what uh, support could be, um, what would be uh, useful for you to speed up? I think, Matthias, you also had some uh, ideas about the challenges um, uh, facing um, these companies. Yes, I think uh, that if I have a look at the, the attendees, I also see uh, some from industry and Doug already mentioned that this is awfully important to have a long uh, run uh, support yeah, on this technology. And as mentioned before, the demonstration projects uh, all over the world are, are very good to support development of technology. That's a good point. Yeah? But there's still a challenge. Where is the uh, advantage for the early or first user, yeah, for the pioneers that first use this. Yeah. We, we have to rely on, on Stadtwerke München in that case because they really have a problem yeah, with that change in, in, uh, in power density in Munich. Yeah. So uh, I don't see this. Yeah. Thanks to our panelists, thanks to our audience, and uh, have a nice rest of your day. Thank you.